This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, honey! After confirming that I was going to be quiet and listen, she began to speak softly, like a kindergarten teacher reading a picture book. And then one day they heard someone say, What are you doing in my swap? That's ridiculous. No one's in hell yet. The rumors said that it was deeper than the ocean, and that anyone it swallowed would sink into the underworld, a bottomless swamp. Its name was Onigafuchi. Wait. I fought back to the story I heard yesterday about the sacrifices sinking in the bottomless swamp. Could that be the swamp she's talking about? The name of the swamp connected to hell was called Onigafuchi, which meant the demon's abyss. And the true name of this village, Hinamizawa, was Onigafuchi Village. I sense blasphemy. Wow, there we go. Now that's a thumbnail. Doesn't he look great? Demons began to appear one after another from deep in the swamp. Yeah, see, I knew this was a satanic cult. The villagers feared that hell was overflowing. Well, I can see why. I actually don't think I can make that the thumbnail. <laughs> it looks a little too creepy. The demons mercilessly attacked the villagers. They could only watch in fear. They could do no more than hide themselves and tremble. That's the fiend. Demons are still extraordinarily strong. Way stronger than mere humans. <laughs> you need to Jesus. それも無理ね。村人たちにとっても村は大切な距離だったから、どんな恐ろしい鬼が攻めてきたからと言って簡単に逃げ出せるはずもなかったのよ。じゃあどうするんですか？滅びるしかないじゃないですか。Okay, hang on. One thing I'm curious about. If we go to the remake, that's the same. That's interesting. Alright. Okay, I just wanted to see if it was a song that I would have recognized from the old soundtrack. Or the Steam soundtrack, whatever it is. Unable to fight and unable to run, all they could do is wait for the village to be destroyed. Then, when everyone had lost hope, their god... Oyashiro-sama descended unto them. There ain't no way Oyashiro-sama is <laughs> not part of the demons. Shion sighed, a little annoyed. Embarrassed, I held my tongue. <laughs> sure! That's why there's a curse about him. The strength of Oyashiro-sama descended from the heavens couldn't be compared to that of the demons. They didn't even fight. They simply prostrated themselves before his radiant authority. Oyashiro-sama urged them to go back to hell from whence they came, but the demons wept and challenged him, saying they could never return. I was about to say how bad do you have to be to get banished from hell, but uh, actually, <laughs> I think you'd have to be righteous to be banished from hell. 
demons who didn't have a place to go, neither in hell nor in the human world. You're not using the term hell correctly, by the way. Of course, they were at fault for attacking the village. They deeply reflected on it and were sorry. Okay, now I know this is a bunch of nonsense. Demons repenting? Who ever heard of such a thing? Yeah, how could that not end well? Guys, the demons are misunderstood. It is unusual. I don't think he's going to end well. When the demons first heard the villagers' invitation, they doubted their ears, but soon burst into tears of joy. The villagers had given them a place to live. It was said that in payment for this good deed, the demons shared their many kinds of power and secrets with the villagers. Nice fiction. The butts is going on with this story. This is a weird one. Uh huh. I mean, demons can take on human form, but. They're not going to be living in peace. A land in which man, demon, and god live together. I had thought the word demon was a noun meaning evil that needs to be exterminated. A god may have mediated for them, but you don't often hear happy endings like that where both sides live in harmony. Because it's impossible. I see. I guess it is kind of interesting. After that, the humans and demons intermixed, and eventually there was no difference between them. It's like the Nephilim story, but like they tried to spin it, being like, oh, it was good! The knowledge the villagers had received from the demons basically made them into something inhuman, what people called transcendent. They were well aware the power they had was heresy, and those below worshipped them. They lived out their lives in secrecy. She just explained that. That's not something you should brag about. There was a hint of amusement in Shion's face as she said that. It was like she wanted to say that she too had demon blood in her. Is there any proof, though? Maybe it's somehow rooted in historical fact beyond just fairy tales. It's not out of the question, but I definitely the story did not go the way you said it did. Yeah, that it that's a creepy premise for sure. And there's evidence to say it actually did happen in the real world. When she said demon, she meant the ones from hell, but in ancient Japan, the word wasn't necessarily used to denote only that kind, right? The more well-known use involves the drifting foreigner theory. As the story goes, Westerners who were shipwrecked in nearby seas had such markedly different customs that they were called demons. Japanese people were relatively similar in appearance to other Asians, but everything about those from the West was different. Their physiques, their faces, and their skin color. True. In Japan, terms like red demon and blue demon evoke images especially of Westerners. Lacking in skin pigments, Westerners would sunburn easily and turn red. Being fair-skinned, I think blood vessels appearing on their skin would look blue, too. A handful of accidental aliens would drift into Japan and came under persecution, being called demons. They would flee into the mountains to survive, turn into bandit groups, and attack villages for food and the like. That's not uh, oh, that's bad. Takano gave me a weird smile when, having come up with such impromptu hypothesis, I unconsciously followed it up with self-deprecation. 
Still, she didn't smile as if to make fun of me. She's like, there are definitely real demons, though. うん。じゃあ、えっと、高野さんはどっちを信じてるんですか?夢のある方を信じたいわね。その方が面白いでしょう。I want to believe I have demon blood. No, you don't. Her, her answer made it sound like a wee bit like a romanticist. Here I'd thought she'd reject unrealistic stories like that. This is where the fun begins. Takano brought her an end to her storytelling and waits for a moment as if to tantalize us. Huh? Suddenly, Shion looked around as if something had caught her eye. Her head bobbed to and fro like she was making sure nothing had changed. Shion pretended as though nothing had happened. Takano also made sure nothing had happened, then cleared her throat and broached the next subject. Only half of them. Oh, fun! <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> This lady is creepy AF. Why are we hanging out with her? Takano, okay, I get it. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not being very subtle here. I thought the fairy tale had a happy ending when the humans and demons lived in peace, but it suddenly began to change into a brutal and bloody story. Okay, there's no way that wouldn't be documented at some level <laughs> at this point. Yeah, we heard about that all the time in Chapter 1. What's what's the trope name for this? She, oh, I think she's like a... Oh yeah, I think the name, the term is Nightmare Fetishist. She very has a great, great unhealthy obsession with the macabre. Takano's explanation was plain and simple. But when I imagined what it must have been like... It was terrifying. They lose their human reason. The villagers turn into real demons en masse. They attack the villages they loathe in the dirty world of the masses below. And then they kill and eat their sacrifices. So, so nope. We don't know for sure if she died in Chapter 1, we just know she disappeared. Because Tomotake was the one who died with the clawed out throat, and then she disappeared. And I was suspicious that she was the one who killed him. Still, I'm not discounting the possibility entirely, because, again, she's very creepy. A village inhabited by those both human and inhuman. It was like the heartwarming episode's colors had inverted like negative film, revealing the painful and the ugly truth. But Watanagashi meant cotton drifting. Watanagashi. Tonight's festival was Watanagashi. I just couldn't reconcile the fun festival with the horrible tale Takano was just telling us. Ellie 
Oh! So it's entrail drifting? Shion, who had been silent up until now, spoke up. Wata? So yeba yuna. Sakana no wata te yu. Eh? Like a jigsaw puzzle, the fun times I had today, and Takano's grotesque tale clicked together in my mind. Wata nagashi. Gut spilling. I didn't think saying that would could ever feel so nauseating. So Look at this! She's like, <laughs> yeah! Can't wait to spill some guts tonight! I'm digging the music though. <laughs> <laughs> Takano, come on. I had no real reason to say that, but I couldn't help it. Man, Rika's been dancing for a long time. I was rattling on, desperately attempting to deny the horrible festival that Takano was describing. Deep down, however, I found myself understanding all too well what she meant. Futons, stuffed with cotton. If the cotton represented entrails in both pronunciation and meaning, then entrail-filled futons would have to be humans. I can't, because Shion dragged me away to make out with her. Or spy on YouTube making out. <laughs> Shion, personal space, what have I told you? <laughs> Toatake is like, I wonder what they're talking about in there. I bet they're having a fun time. <laughs> Shion grabbed one of my ears, reminding me that this wasn't somewhere I should raise my voice. There are no windows! No one will know! Even so, I still can't suppress this agitation, I feel. The butts? Oh, hi! That's... That's certainly creepy! Wow! It's like you're trying to just... I get it, I get it, okay? She's definitely connected with this, alright? I understand. You're really being heavy-handed with how creepy you're making Takano. <laughs> She's purposely making it on ugly. <laughs> yeah, sure, right. I didn't see the dance all the way through, so I don't know what kind of performance Rika was putting on after I had left. When I told this to Takano, she kindly explained Rika's dance to me. To summarize what she said, after what I'd seen, Rika would pierce the futons with that hoe, cut them open, and pull out the cotton inside. She'd cut the cotton out one bit at a time and set it afloat. That's the kind of ritual it was. <laughs> Oh, look at that sword on the wall. This is Takano's Christmas right here. She's like, oh my gosh. Takano would be the lady who would start celebrate, like putting up decorations for Halloween like right after the 4th of July and would leave them up until Christmas. <laughs> She's just like, Halloween is the greatest holiday. I can totally... I can totally mess with these kids. That, yeah, 10 out of 10 creepy... F well, it's not super creepy. It's more ominous. It's not like a true nightmare face, though. Atakano's <laughs> strangely happy giggle, I felt for some reason violent displeasure. Yeah! Rika, every day during our lunch break, she'd take a rice-pounding mallet into the schoolyard, and she'd work so hard, sweating bullets to practice for the offertory dance that she had done today. All that effort. All that work. Takano disgraced it. Even though she worked hard to practice for today. <laughs> no, I think I chose them great. <laughs> There's no way this is teasing. She's, like, just showing us how creepy she is. A moment before I opened my mouth to express how angry I was, Shion stopped me. 
Shion must have been fully aware of how that story made me feel. <laughs> so for some reason, I, this lady seems kind of creepy. Yeah, I wonder why. She's breaking into creepy torture sheds and telling ghost stories. <laughs> Uh-huh. Tagano spoke without a hint of malice, so she smiled gracefully. Shion pointed to one of the walls, vaguely illuminated by the lantern's light. There was... Mere moments ago, they hadn't held at my interest. They were just boring-looking tools lined up on the shelves. <laughs> All those uninteresting tools that I didn't understand how to use, they all suddenly took on a new meaning, and I couldn't help but let out a groan. At first they had looked like carpentry tools, like chisels or planes. However, when I fought back, I'd seen pictures of these sorts of tools before. Yeah, they... they came up in a Japanese history textbook. Yes, on the page introducing the Katai Shinsho, or the new text on anatomy. <laughs> These aren't carpentry tools. These strangely shaped tools, they're for dissection. Everyone knows that in the Edo period, they would dissect the corpses of those who had been put to death in order to gain knowledge about Western medical techniques. Illustrations of these dissection tools they used at the time came up in textbook su supplements. That's true! That is how Michelangelo uh, was able to become such a talented, like, sculptor of the human form. Because he would, like, steal bodies from graveyards and dissect them to see how human anatomy worked. It's kind of gruesome, but also kind of cool. The fanes they hung up on this wall all looked exactly the same as those. <laughs> Yes, I would definitely want a scarier way of looking at them, you crazy lady. <laughs> Takano holding the lantern, the only source of light in the room, led us along the wall. She had the only light, so I had to walk after her, whether I liked it or not. Takano illuminated a coiled chain, which left a bigger impression than the other things we saw. The chain in itself was nothing unusual, but further along it were metal fetters that looked that were that were like hinges, clearly meant for binding people. Yeah, I told, I pointed that out immediately. Shion tapped me on the shoulder and pointed to a restraining table that was clearly shaped like a person. My spine froze. My blood felt like it was turning into sherbet as it crawled up my back. On each of these joints, there were things like chains and iron balls attached. It was like the table was searching for its next sacrifice, ready to spread their arms wide and close them in. <laughs> Chef Keiichi, you have been chopped. Judges. <laughs> Keiichi, you said that you were going to make curry, and you just served over-salted rice, and for that reason, we had to chop you. <laughs> thanks, for the <laughs> thanks for the experience, judges. <laughs> the words chopping block just sent a, j a jolt through my body. When I looked more closely, there were many dark slices carved into it, as though from a knife or a saw. They were the most clear-cut signs of usage you could ask for. I proved these tools weren't just for show. They were used for their original purpose. If someone was strapped tightly onto this table, they probably wouldn't be able to even move a muscle. Their guts would be defenseless. You'd take one of those eerie cooking knives lined up over there, stab them with it, and then you'd slice open their belly and dissect them. Before coming in here, Shion had mentioned that she had a good guess of what was inside, but it seems to have exceeded her imagination. <sighs> Takano had this happy expression like she was visiting a toy store for the first time. I don't get it. This is this Mio Takano person has nerves of steel. She's oh she's also super creepy. Are these these bizarre, grotesque ob objects that fascinating to her? I, for one, was not enjoying myself. I'll be frank. This is all too weird for me. Still, there is something even more horrifying than all of this. That would be none other than Takano herself. Yep! Takano holding the lantern, giving off such a thin beam of light. If she t suddenly turned it off, then I would... What would I do that when the next moment everything went totally dark? That's why I was scared. Takano had the only light, 
And anyway, I was scared. At some point, Shion had started holding onto my shirt sleeve. It was a little annoying to walk like that, but I didn't shake her off. That minor sensation allowed me to feel the presence of an ally, here and now. I don't trust Shion either, though. Before we even walked halfway through the storehouse, the air I felt on my skin changed completely. Those cruel tools lined all up, all crammed together in this place. Some were horrible ones that were made to take away sacrifice's freedom, and some were tools to made to efficiently disassemble and prepare the bodies for consumption. Those were just the things I understood. There were plenty of other strange-looking objects that I couldn't even guess the purpose of. Now that I was here, I didn't have the slightest desire to hear the details about what sort of terrified reasons they were meant to be used for. Oh, man. At the very least, they were all completely different from the sort of clean, simple killing function of a katana. Tools to kill people were obviously constructed in such a way that they could kill people. If that was the goal, then the person you used them on would obviously end up dead. The kinds of tools here, however, were different. The tools that were here were for cutting people, for crushing them, for boiling them and cooking them, and for grinding them. They were the tools of torture. They weren't made to kill people. People dying was just an incidental result. Actually, that might not even kill them. If the sacrifices could die during such a horrifying ritual process, that would be nice, but they don't even die in the end. They remain in a state of hellish pain. Perhaps they were only being allowed to live. Only now in this moment did I fully realize just how terrifying and fearsome that difference was. <laughs> Why are you smiling about that? Takano, as if reading my mind, displayed a shocking smile. No! Not immediately! You're definitely going to be in horrifying agony for like a minute. I previously thought burning alive would be like one of the worst ways of going, but actually it would be over in about a minute. Guillotine is legit one of the more humane ways of execution, because it's pretty much instantaneous. It's horrifying, but hey, you get decapitated, no ifs, ands, or buts, and you're gonna die like instantly from that. She described such horrors in a vaguely medical way. She is a nurse, but this is taking it way too far. She won't immediately answer the question I had. There is a saying that nothing can scare a doctor. I guess it's true. She's a nurse, not a doctor. She's like, Alright, that's it, you little bleep! <laughs> True, they would. Yep, it was pretty terrifying. To think the memories of when I went to a day camp with my family would come rushing back now of all times so vividly. Never underestimate the potential for human cruelty. That's insane. You'd grill someone the whole day, and they'd still be conscious. It's said that ancient Rome, famous for their executions, thought of plenty of ways to execute someone while having the victim stay alive as long as possible. Yep. Blech. Shion was behind me, clinging to me. Not just because she was scared, she was protecting her stomach. How do you know all this, Takano? I'm pretty sure this is not included in the med school prerequisites. I felt a sick feeling in my stomach. It was like my organs were coiling up just from Takano's stare. Alright, folks. As soon as we're out of here, we gotta get Tomatake with a different girl. 
This one's too creepy. Man, Rika's been dancing for hours now! <laughs> oh, she spoke with pleasure, as if she had come here on a sightseeing trip. I heard Shion gulping multiple times to you near my ears. I wanted nothing more than to not hear anything at all. So why? Why only at times like these do I begin to hear things I shouldn't be able to hear? 